Welcome, welcome, welcome to your reading. So, um, you know, as you spoke about, uh, this reading will just be your reading, um, more in depth, more just about you. I'm not, you know, looking, having my, my cameras, I think it's frozen right now. One second. Hopefully there's no camera issues. Oh God. Okay. One second. But anyways, um, yeah, so as we spoke about, you know, I was uh, going to do your reading. Uh, lighting could be better. Give me one second. Let's turn on more. More this color. But yeah, so this is your personal reading. Um, so we'll dive into a lot here, independent of uh, the family system. And then, um, you know, because... I'm basically like haven't looked at any of the charts, um, any of the family charts, like on purpose because when I do that reading, okay, now my camera's doing this thing. One second, sorry, this this should fix it like permanently. Yeah, it's because it's tangled up. Yeah, I do this, but yeah, um, it's it's uh, this one I want to just do completely independent, and then after that, the next reading will be a way longer one that will be um, start video. Yeah. There you go. Um, okay, lighting's up. Perfect. I like this kind of lighting where it's kind of more dark. You can still see me. Um, so yeah, basically this, this is your reading and, um, we'll, um, do the other one after. So I promised you that, you know, you'd skip the wait, waiting list. Um, I made that promise to you, so I'm upholding it and, um, yeah, so let's go ahead. I have of course in your, your, your name, um, using your initials, um, as requested. And as respected, I never want anyone to feel like, you know, their identity is, is, is anywhere, even though it's astrology. So let's go ahead and share the screen. I know it won't mean much to you. Um, I'll just tell you that sometimes during these readings, I like to kind of drift off into my own little spiritual world. I've got like crystals and stuff. I've got, um, you know, different tools I use that help me with my intuition, um, which I'm grabbing at the current moment. And uh, yeah, I kind of will go back and forth between this being visible and this being invisible, essentially. Because, uh, yeah, it just works better for me. Um, so in essence, let me find my field to do this crystal. So yeah, you 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 know you got your um your Capricorn rising, which am I correct to say that you have speaker rising? Let's check. Not speaker, I mean Vega. Vega's fifteen. Speaker's in Libra. What are we talking about? Okay, but you have Juno rising. Interesting. Okay, and I'm just checking for for important fixed stars, real quick, real quick, real, real quick. Where's the moon at? So yeah, Pisces moon, Sun in in Libra. Interesting. I, I just had someone like that not too long ago, with Cap rising. So a, a nice mix of elements. So you got the water element with Pisces, um, the air with your Libra, um, the earth with your Capricorn, and you have more water with your Mars and Scorpio. And then, um, so water, earth, air. And then let's, let's clear this out. And then, yeah, there's, let's see, is there a lack of fire? Let's, uh, where's Mercury? in libra yeah so yeah there's there's no fire in the chart i mean you you have your your jupiter in leo but jupiter is kind of like a middle planet so um you know first things first uh what you know the question is like what is the relationship between um you know libra sun right the sun being the sun kind of represents the core essence of who you are if you want to have it like that um it's it's like your more, more about your identity while the moon, which is so overlooked, just kind of how the female energy, it's kind of ironic, it's not ironic, it's synchronistic, how the female energy is overlooked in society, um, meaning like female energy, meaning intuition, emotions, you know, this world is all about, you know, I mean, like the, 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 the not the spiritual world, but just the world most people live in is very dominated by masculine energies. I don't mean that by men, um, I mean that by, um, just, you know, kind of work, 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 
and there's no there's no surprise that um that the sun sign of course obviously it's really easy to know your sun sign um you just know your birthday but the moon sign i'm telling you is, is if not more important definitely just as important i i can make i can make an argument of why it would be more important um because the sun it's more obvious like more people know their sun sign i mean everyone knows their sun sign you know um you know what people know about their sun sign not always that much and there's lots of misinformation especially like in the sorry i'm just thinking out of cup right now i don't know i don't think you can hear it but there's lots of misinformation you know about about astrology all over the place um so you know um i assume that my clients know about like um you know the main energy of, of what their sun sign represents but um i always you know want to speak about about some of the more karmic aspects of it so um yeah so so first of all like as i said so the sun is like your identity the moon is really like it, it's like what runs the show on an unconscious level right so um i always use the metaphor not always sometimes of um how the sun is like if, if you were an egg right the ascendant right which is capricorn is like the mask it's like, it's like the, the the outer shell right what people see your outer personality kind of like yeah what people see is a good way in of, of explaining it like like how you how you project your 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 yourself right outwardly it's very yeah it's less less deep more about personality the sun is like the core essence of who you are. It's your identity. It's your purpose. It's, 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 it's very, it's very linked. It's very, it's, it's like the yin yang of moon, sun and moon of masculine and femininity. So a lot of astrologers, they kind of overlook what I'm about to do, which is really dive into like, what is the, you know, the relationship between your sun and your moon? Cause the moon is the, is the, is the, the yolk, the yellow part of the egg, right? The, the, um, I guess you call it like the, like you know the undercurrent like what it what it takes for you to really feel fulfilled um what runs the show on an unconscious level <clears throat> what it takes for you to feel secure and ultimately feel happy if you really think about it i mean you can't really feel happy if you're not feeling secure within yourself so i'm looking at your chart now i see moon is uh opposite pluto and square neptune as you know no hard aspects of your sun Unaspect of Mercury, ooh la la, um, and that's not a bad ooh la la. That's like a okay, um, and then Venus, you know, very, only is conjunct Mars, and that's, that's pretty much the only aspect for Venus. So yeah, you don't have a very um, let's see the karma, yeah. So you don't really have like a really really complex chart in the sense of like there's not so much going on um in terms of like um difficulties. Now, I can say before I get into the moon sun part, you know, that when you lack fire in the chart, fire is uh, Aries, Sag, Leo. Um, it can be a little bit difficult for like things like motivation, self-starting, um, you know, assertiveness, stuff like that. Right. Um, so people who lack fire, sometimes they need a little bit of a push in the back. Oftentimes they'll you know, find partners, um, who can provide that, not all the time. And, um, let me go grab a kombucha. Actually. Yeah. So, 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 um, the moon and Pisces, right? So, so this is like a very, very, and this is probably the reason that you're, you know, attracted to astrology, even if it's like, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I told you my, my best friend grew up in Singapore. I have some friends in Singapore. I actually have a, a lot of clients these days in Singapore. Quite interesting, huh? I've had like a lot lately in the last, um, I don't know, month or two months. I've had a lot of people from Singapore, which was is 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 interesting because I didn't really get many from Singapore before. So maybe my my vibe is becoming very Singaporean. I have no idea, but I know I know I know enough about the country and the culture. And I mean, like at least my friend, he he was there. I guess he he hasn't been there for probably close to a decade, but still, you know, he he grew up there. He's my best friend. He's my best friend. So we've talked a lot about it. Um, and yeah, basically, Moon and Pisces, right? So this is like the most sensitive potential. Um, like it's it's one of the most like like the biggest indicators of of extreme sensitivity. Um, 
and it's very very empathetic so it makes you like a super empathetic person um someone who who who's who also when i use the word psychic a lot of people i mean people i, I was gonna say a lot of people get triggered by that word but a lot of people hear it the wrong way what i mean by that is i mean more of like the sixth sense like it gives you more of like a sixth sense uh, intuition right of being able to kind of like let's say you know you, you could, you're able to kind of look at someone um and and almost like read them like you can like really really but like you can really really tell a lot about someone just like you have this power right this ability to really to really you have a you know and also it's like a very very vivid imagination um and it just makes a very dreamy and very very creative person very creative lots of uh you know the best artists have moon and pisces um i mean art, art is, is, is is there's all kinds of art you know so it's like it's not like every art, like, you know, just because you have that, you're an artist, not that. Um, one second, hold up. My brother sent me an important text. One second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So, um, basically with moon and Pisces. So, so when I do astrology, I am very honest. I am someone who wants my clients to grow. I'm so, someone who wants, um, I'm, I'm not, you know, there's some, some astrologers who will just say, okay, this is the thing that's going to make that person, you know, feel very special or feel perfect. And I'm not saying you are very special, but like what I'm saying is like, um, anyway, like there's astrologers who will sugarcoat things um because they fear that if they you know reveal some of the more difficult parts of someone's chart that that person you know won't like it and blah 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 me i am really i'm all about growth you know i, I told you i have two two masters in psychology i like to implement that you know my knowledge of that in, into my overall work um and um i i give it to you know i, I give i give the warnings right that like i get because like everything in astrology there's there it's it's like um a metaphor for astrology is that it's like the hand you were dealt the karmic hand you were dealt right so what you do like you know in a game of, of whatever card game you want to input um you know you, your free will is ultimately like what makes things happen right so that's like people get the wrong idea about astrology because they think of this like fatalism right like oh my god if everything's written the stars then i have no free will no it's not like that at all it's um astrology is an interplay between free will and your nail chart right so what i'm telling you is like kind of like the the hands you were dealt the karmic hands you were dealt and um you know your your character your your ambition your you know like how you responded to different experiences and and this that and the fourth you know like that is what is not shown in the chart that's what's shown you know that or that's what will be more revealed when we, you know, when we speak live. Right. Um, and of course we said we would do like one grand follow-up for everything I think we said. So that won't, you know, like we would start with just your chart and then we would kind of make our way to the family or we would just kind of like relate everything to the family. Cause that's, what's really important to you. But I, I also, I know that you really want to know about yourself and um, I think you deserve that. You know, you deserve to, to have this, um, this deeper, reading um not that the other readings aren't deep but the other readings it's really you know we're, we're really trying to figure out like the sis the family system and, and how to how to you know best raise the kids and 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 and, and you know the car like it's 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 more based on the connections and connecting dots right so of course i'm not going to be able to 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 do like um you know a reading like this for every single person and then also do the compatibility and then also do the composite and then also um, you know, all these things, it'd be like a 17 hour reading, you know, not 17, but probably like long enough to have your brain explode, let's just say, and mine. Um, so yeah, moon and Pisces. Um, so warning sign, as I was saying before, um, especially so, so Libra suns, they have this tendency too. So boundaries is something that, you know, someone, a Pisces, a Libra would definitely have to watch out for. Um, of course, like, you know, on a, maybe on a more positive, like a more like positive note, like Libra is ruled by Venus, which is super, super creative. Um, 
as you know, Libras are all about art and beauty and design and, and, and harmony and balance and beauty. That's like the high energy of Libra, right? The high energy of Pisces is like, is, is mysticism, imagination, oneness, compassion, um, you know, just, just connection with the divine and, um, yeah. But what both of your, your sun, your moon have warning signs for is this, um, potential for, 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 for lacking boundaries. Right. So with Pisces, when I speak about boundaries, I'm talking about, um, like more psychic, emotional kind of boundaries, like psychological. Yeah. Like boundaries, like, for example, like, um, Pisces moon people can be the type of people that will like in a, in a, and I know you're married, so it doesn't apply it, but I, like I give these readings in a similar fashion. If someone's 20, 30, 40, like it's, 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 it doesn't change. This is your nail chart. Right. So they can have the tendency to, to, to like a lot of Pisces moon people, like in relationships, they'll, they'll be the one who wants to like change the other person or they'll, they'll see the person just for the potential. And with Libra, there can be a tendency to kind of like overextend yourself like um because there's such a need for harmony there's such a need for balance that um like when that's not there right they can sometimes um like kind of put themselves down right in order for the balance to be reached so that you know it, it's obviously very very important um to like you know when you have these these in your chart to be very firm and you know the the when we in astrology when we, when we think about okay what's what's the best way we look at the opposite signs because opposite signs are the same energy but manifested completely differently. Um, so the opposite sign of Libra is Aries, right? So you learn from your opposite sign, um, and you take things from it, right? So Aries is like a very dominant energy. Um, it's all about just doing right uh libra can be very very indecisive um because they, they don't want to upset people they're they're very very like at the high energy very kind-hearted very considerate and i know this for a fact that you're a very very considerate person on a on many many levels um but that can be a double-edged sword you know when you put other people's needs before your own and you know um like people like what was it? I, I had a quote from this Indian mystic that I what was it? It was like it was something about like the tree. Let me let me find it. I literally just posted it. You probably already saw it. But um yeah, it was the the tree that gives you the most will get the most hurts. And that is definitely like a very Pisces moon kind of energy, right? Um someone who gives so much of themselves can sometimes get the, you know, get hurt in different situations. So also, you know, Pisces moon is very imaginative. So there can be a tendency towards escapism. So when we talk about uh, low high Pisces, low Pisces moon is like, um, you know, not confronting things. Um, like something comes up, let's say, right. Um, and also you have your south node in Pisces, which is very, very, um, like a, a beautiful placement south node represents like your past life tendency if you want to call it like that um so you're you're someone who's de definitely a past life mystic um take that for what you want and i'm sure that it resonates when you when you when you hear that like like a lot of the things i'm talking about and a lot of this this kind of spiritual world it comes natural to you um you know and being from singapore not that i want to project my you know my friend you know my friend's experience but I know that it is, it's not necessarily a very spiritual place. It's a, it's, it's a place that, um, from my understanding, you know, is I have, I've, I've, I've only been to Indonesia and Asia, which is obviously very, very different, but, um, yeah, like basically it's, it's, a, it's, it's very business oriented, very Western kind of place in, in Asia. So, um, lots of Western ideals, um, materialism, all that stuff. So, um, what can happen in a big thing for you is that you, you really, really need to watch out like who you surround yourself with. Um, because you can be the kind of, you can, as a Pisces moon, you, you're like a sponge for energy, good and bad. So 
um, Pisces moon, you know, they can be very overwhelmed, like in certain environments. That's why like being like close to water, close to nature, you know, it's a water sign. So like close to, to water can be very healing, taking baths, um, you know, any, anything like, like, like that, um, is very healing, but just really like one thing, one trick I always tell Pisces moon, and sometimes they struggle with self-esteem is that Neptune is ruled by cameras. So I tell Pisces people this, like, um, or Pisces moon or people who have Neptune, you know, and you have a very strong Neptune too. You have Neptune in the 12th house. So that's another sign of mysticism and psychic. I don't know if you saw like my, my post, I don't know how long you follow me. I think you said, um, for a little bit, but I have one post that's like most, I don't know if I reposted it on my, uh, this second page or if it's on my main page, but it's like most psychic placements and you have several of them, right? You have Jupiter in the eighth house. That's one. You have Pisces moon. That's two. You have Neptune in the 12th house. That's three. Um, and for now, and then you have South node in Pisces. That's four. So that's four, you know, very, very like psychic intuitive ones. So that, that area of life comes very easy to you. And you have th this natural ability to, to read people and to understand like, like kind of how someone's, how someone's heart is like, 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 um, by, by looking at them. But this is the thing is that Pisces also rules delusions. So, you really have to get in touch with that intuitive part of yourself um, and practice like things like meditation, like those would be very powerful for you. And also dream like your whole, like your imagination, like you, like it's, it's important for you to have like an outlet. Um, and you, you know, you might be someone who, who, um, who's like with your, your, your son close to the mid heaven over there in Libra, which um, I think Spica is 24. So it's kind of not there, but you know, I, I definitely see you being someone who who probably is is um work you know devoted to 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 their work um their job or their career or whatever you want to call it you know their like the the tenth house rules that but also just it can rule just outer life purpose right so that's very very important for you um you have Pluto Sun Mercury all there so that's that's obvious and it's in Libra which is a you know, a sign that's very, very good for, for business, very, very good for, um, you know, it's the scales. Think about it. So it's like the scales, the marketplace is the scales. So it's it's um, very good for diplomacy, very good for 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 being able to kind of like see. And, and, and your whole chart works really well for, for any kind of like success in the business world because you'd have the ability to kind of sense people's, um, like know who to trust, know who not to trust. But back to what I was saying earlier, you know, with Pisces, like there's a big need for alone time in periods of time where, you know, like, cause like, Lib like this is like why, you know, your, your, your sun, your moon clash is that Libra is a very social sign. Libra is all about friends. It's all about, um, you know, it's an air sign all about community. It's, it's very, it loves to communicate, loves to speak. It loves to, you know, it's very relationship oriented. Um, now the moon, like the, but this other part of you, so this is in psychology, what we refer to as a split, um, and I also, by the way, I do um, astrological, astrological, astrological based um, psychotherapy. If you're ever interested in, in in that, just throwing it out there. Sometimes, like during these readings, I just like off tell talk about the other services I offer, so so people know because I don't really advertise them much. Um, but yeah, basically, like there's there's definitely this need for for alone time because your alone time will probably be very very sacred to you, and that's most likely how you really recharge. Um, so you know, and with your, your Mars and, and Venus in Scorpio, which don't worry, I know I'm going fast, but it all wraps around. You'll see. Um, there's this deep need and love for this, this very close intimacy, right? It's, it's, um, it's, it's this, this very, very passionate sort of love energy. And we'll, we'll see kind of how that, that relates. Um, when we look at the, the, all the charts, like, like the family and the husband and stuff, but, um, the split in relationships would come from, um on one end being you know like having that that extreme closeness but on the other end and you know like like um you could have I, I would actually like make a guess that you have a husband who um who gives you that and maybe is similar in that sense and if not similar um you know understands that part of you you know that part of you that and maybe you know maybe and, and maybe you haven't even given yourself that you know who knows but Pisces moons, 100%. They 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 need moments of seclusion, and uh, what can happen early in life when you're like getting into like your first relationships is that there can like people you know can get really insecure, right? Because they can think, okay, well, what this person like 
there's like all this passion, all this like this deep love, but then they want to be alone. Like, why do they want to be alone? Do they not like me? But no, it's really more of an internal process because you are so in touch with like the spiritual world, like when you actually try to be. Like, if you create that intention, it is a magical, it, like there's doors open to you that aren't open to other people. I mean, a thousand percent. I'll go back to my face for a little bit. Um, yeah. So, you see the cat. <laughs> um, so, okay, there it is. So, yeah, so, so that, that, that's one thing. Um, like, so, so, so how, so how to deal with that, right? Like if, if that's, if that's something that, that comes up, it can come up with relationship with family, you know, um, it's in the house of siblings, third house moon. So, you know, you could have a very, um, not all the time, but a very like, um, close relationship, but it can, it can be very, very deep, but also very up, up and down. If, if there's a sibling that there's like lots of karma with, we'll have to talk about that in our follow-up. Um, and you have to remind me of all these things that, that I say, talk, like, that we have to talk about because and, and also take notes because um like probably i'll have done like so many readings in between that time so i you know and literally i, I forget if you like I, I have a very very good memory like um in general but like when, when i'm doing readings like this people have told me i'm channeling um i don't know but like like uh, an interesting thing is that like if you quiz me like five minutes after finishing a reading of anything about that person's chart I'm in such a flow state that I don't, I, I, I would barely remember anything. It's, it's really crazy. So yeah. Imagine like, you know, like weeks later or something like that. Um, and is this not charging? Holy shit. Okay. Thank God I caught this. I've been having like, I have a, like a really, really good computer and, um, it's been giving me problems, but now it's charging. Um, so yeah. Um, alone time, um you know also like anything like like related to like the esoteric or the spiritual and this is not alcohol i don't i don't drink i drink very rarely this is kombucha just so you know i, I just like the aesthetic as you as a libra you probably understand i love the aesthetics of of this this class you know i just like how it looks I like seeing the color um so yeah that that that's one thing so how how to how how to do how to like kind of shift that is to create a very strong internal sense like value system um kind of like a, a system of like like a, almost like rules for your life you know rules for boundaries you know um you know if this person like pushes the you know like like what like what what are your boundaries now when we speak about boundaries though you are a capricorn rising and that is actually very, very good for boundaries because it's ruled by Saturn, which makes your chart ruled by Saturn. So that's going to push a lot of that energy away. It's not going to push it all away, but it's going to, um, it's very, very good for success. Um, uh, Capricorn Risings, they're the people that, like, let's say you're in a job interview, a very high job interview. There's five people who are exactly the same competence, who have the exact same comp competency, right? The person who has Capricorn Rising will get the job if they're exactly like everything is exactly the same because the way that they project themselves, the way they look, the way that they speak and well, speaking is more mercury, but whatever, you get the point. The way that they are, that people see them is it conveys a sense of responsibility. It conveys a sense of, um, of, of just like someone that you would, you would love to, you know, have work for you that, you know, that you would love to, um, you know, that you would trust that, you know, would, would be consistent. Right. And that's kind of like the Capricorn rising. So I'll be curious to hear about how that, um, works with the whole boundaries things, boundary thing. Now, um, you know, with cap rising and how, how, how it mixes with the other ones, I think what it does is that it, it gives you lots of diversity, lots of, um, like, um, you know, you, you have one that's mutable and two that are cardinal. So yeah. So, so that does help you with the self starringness being a Capricorn rising because it is such a it's a ambitious sign. Usually Cap risings they have to kind of um it's almost like they they feel like they have to like really grow up early in life like um extra responsibilities when they're younger stuff of that nature whether it's like taking care of siblings or or um you know like like anything where where they just had like 
more responsibilities than the you know people around them. Um, but yeah, like as I was saying before, you know, like like back to to kind of like what I was saying, your your, your Chiron and Taurus speaks perfectly to what I was saying about the value system, um, and the need for that because Cap, uh, Chiron Taurus, um, is all about having experience or experiencing a crisis of values, right? Um, and there can be like sometimes, especially with the Pisces moon, there can be a real difficulty of understanding your own emotions and of seeing yourself in an objective way. So, um, and that can lead to a, a lack of self-worth, um, which sometimes people like, um, try to, um, overcompensate by accruing like possessions, money, all that stuff. So it's all about linking. Um, well, first of all, you know, there can also be like a distrust for the body, right? Um, so like things like yoga can be really, really powerful. And, um, it's, it, it's all about like learning how to kind of rely on your own intuition. Like intuition can be felt in the body. Right. And I was, I was telling you this before and I kind of sidetracked away from it, like about the Pisces moon is that like one trick also besides like the filming yourself because Pisces Neptune rules cameras or, or talk, doing affirmations in the mirror. Like literally, you can just be like, "Hey, this is my blog, HK, HKT blog for the day." You show no one, you don't sh show anyone, and you just kind of like talk about like what's on your mind. You get the emotions flowing, and you get them out. Either that or writing, because you know your moon is in the third house, so that is really really good for writing and being a very like creative writer, right? Um, but like basically, yeah, these things are very powerful. Um, but what I was gonna say is that with with um the twelfth house you know, besides the alone time, um, you know, Pisces people, like, they can, like, like, let's say, like, you're around, like, a group of friends, right? Um, or, like, let's say even just one person, right? Let's say, let's say, it's, let's say for the sake of argument, it's like, um, it's like a, an acquaintance, right? Um, you spend time with them, and you start to feel this kind of energy, right? Um, let's say this person kind of has, like, a, like, a, they're, they're like a subtle energy vampire, right? When you go and spend time alone, so like a trick is that you you can learn so much about other people by how once you return to your equilibrium state after um, the encounter, um, that's when you can really like tell a lot about that person. Because when you return to yourself, you'll see, let's say if you're around a really high vibe person, they'll fuel you, fuel you, excuse me. Um, they'll give you a sense of like, like when you're done talking to them, like you'll feel more energy, right? Now, this is way different with um with with low energy people because you'll feel drained and you'll feel you'll feel tired, you'll feel maybe in a bad mood, you'll and you can really take on a lot of their energy. So learning like energetic protection tech, uh, techniques can be very, very powerful. Um and that's something like if you ever did decide to do counseling or whatever, that, that's more in the that in the realm of that. Um I know a few of them, um, but I'm I'm not like an expert in that area. But I I do know some things. I, I know, I'm like a Sag moon, so I know, like I I've studied lots of different things. I'm not just astrology, you know. I, I I'm also, uh, I you know doing real estate, or I guess like I, you could say starting to do real estate. And I've always been interested in, in business and marketing, marketing everything. You know, I mean, a lot of like what I do what I do with my astrology is is you know marketing based. I mean, like to be able to to create, you know, in four years, even though it's nothing, like it's, it's not easy to, in, you know, the Instagram astrology world to, to get an account with no, no backing from anyone big, no, you know, I've never asked for help from anyone. And that's kind of an energy that you have too, you know, as a Capricorn moon, they, 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 they really want to do it on their own, you know, but with that said, um, you know, Jupiter in the eighth house is going to give you lots of luck. Um, a lot of people that have Jupiter in the eighth house, they either like have like an inheritance or they 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 get very uh, fortunate with who their partner is in in terms of like like a fi like financial level, um, and um, that's just one level of it, right? So so it it takes care of you in, in it, and it could also be like if let's say you were like an investment banker or someone that like um, your job was based on on making money out of other people's money that having Jupiter there is really, really good. Cause it means that you're, you're, you have lots of luck and expansion when you're able to, to, um, you know, like, like from other people's resources. So it's, it's very karmic. 
and it's based on your south node in pisces which is like this um basically saying like in past lives you've been this very like compassionate person who's you know really really like done a lot for other people selflessly and it's very very good karma but also it's 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 also speaking to this um potential right of you being someone who also like going back to like the the over giving you know in, in lacking the boundaries and in, in um potentially like like not like like being too like daydreamy you know like you might have like all these amazing skills so that's why you have all this energy in in your chart in this lifetime right all this like tent house energy is because in past lives you've kind of been held back from from like really really um taking all of this energy and putting it into a career putting it into something that can like actually like be like tangible to the masses and really help other people or even help yourself, you know? So that's that. Um, you know, Leo, I like, I like Leo Jupiter because I think it's a very good leadership. I think, I think, you know, you think you, 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 you make a very good leader uh, for sure, especially with your, your, your son conjunct Pluto. Um, that's the kind of energy you see for like people who were like CEOs or, or um, you know, like really, really like in charge people, right? Very responsible, very self motivated, and your midheaven is in in Libra also. So, um, it's at twenty nine degrees. So, and it's conjunct Mercury. So that's really, really strong. Um, because the way I look at that is that in your career, there's you, 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 you're able to really manifest a lot. Career. When I say career, like I said, Dharma. Remember, because like lots of people, they like not everyone has a, a job. You know, not everyone is meant to like work in the corporate world or is meant to like, you know, like, um, like they have different phases in their lives, of course, but they're, they're not necessarily meant to that. Like 10th house, can, it's just like what you're doing, like on the outer level, basically. But in your case, you know, it, I, it's very, very powerful. And, um, you know, having mercury on the mid heaven is the ultimate, um, indicator of someone who can have like, let's say they have their like, the thing they're passionate about. Let's, 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 let's use me as a hypothetical ex example, even though I'm not like this, let's say I was really, really big in real estate. Right. But, I, but like I did it only for money, but then on the side I had astrology, right. But I was passionate about astrology, but real estate was a moneymaker, you know, and, um, having like what you have, like it would, it would give, it would, it would give me the ability or the hypothetical me, the ability to, to have two careers at once and to be super, super multifaceted and versatile. And um, yeah, it's really, really great for, for, for being able to, to, to have like the moneymaker and then have like the passion and have this energy where you're able to turn in time, the passion into the actual moneymaker or into like, you know, what, what, what you really need to sustain yourself. And you're really trying to sustain yourself on that, on that, like that level of, 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 you know, every human is right. Every, every, no human wants to to do something that they're not connected to on a heart level. So that's really nice. Um, now you, you have another indicator like Saturn in the ninth house is very interesting for like lots of astrologers have that to be really honest with you. Um, and it's in the same, same, same sign as your, as your vertex or North node. So, um, what that does, you know, usually like a lot of people have that day, um, around 30 years old that's when they start to kind of open themselves up more philosophically like um sometimes you know maybe they're they're held back by their family beliefs like religious beliefs um but they always had like this idea in their head of like there's something different there's something else and um you know spirituality then becomes something that spirituality slash like higher philosophy slash like higher education anything like traveling stuff like that because it's also the ninth house all these things that, that help you gain a higher perspective and higher wisdom of, about what I call ultimate truth, which is like the, the three questions of like, where do we come from? Why, like, why are we, why are, are we, why are we here? What are we doing? And where are we going? Like the three big questions, right? So you'll, ha so having Saturn there will give like quite a, a serious yet studious approach to that. It's also, you know, something that, that can be very good for, um, for 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? For for being very hard, you know, hardworking in Virgo also, and good at problem solving, um, and lots of discipline, very very disciplined. Um, 
but yeah, th- there can be like early on this like this feeling of restriction when it comes to exploring the meaning of life. But later on, like after the Saturn turn, um, you, you you start to take take on which maybe is you know this astrology reading is part of that this more serious approach. Like I imagine you being someone who who really like wants to know. I mean, you you got a full uh, child reading, and I forgot how long you said you followed me. Um, if you follow if you found me on on uh, my second page. If you found me on my second page, which I think you did, I forget, then that just shows like, you know, first of all, it shows your amazing, your amazing intuition. And I'm not just saying that because like I'm a like I'm a very honest person. I'm a very good astrologer. And I go above and beyond for my clients. But like, um, you know, you you knew like I was the I was the guy, basically. I don't, I don't mean that in an arrogant way at all. I mean that in the sense that like there are astrologers who will take your money, who will you know maximize their profits and who will run their, their, their astrology practices more like, you know, uh, a business in the sense of like maximize profits at all costs, you know? And once they get paid, like, that's it, you know, not that's it. Like they're going to scam you, but you're, you know, they might like not take it as seriously as I take it. I take it super, super, super seriously because I realize that, you know, this might be the only birth chart reading you get in your life. And, you know, I want you to have the entire download that, that, that you get from this you know i want i want i don't want there to be anything like i care about you even though i don't know you right it's my duty every client is karmically linked to me in some way so that's like um speaking to your intuition because like you know i'm i'm young but i i am one of you know the better astrologers that exists right now at least like that i've seen and that's just me being honest so um and I made a post the other day about about like this this whole thing about like like this fake humility people have and, and this is kind of a side side note just like when I say that it's because I I'm very like um like I'm someone who who likes I, I have my very very unique idea like my ideas are very very independent of of mainstream kind of life like I have my ideas of of, of what like like I, I question a lot of things like why why are we like this you know that's the Sag Moon um. And it's, it's, that's kind of one thing is like, why, like, why can't we, we say like, I'm good at this, but also I'm bad at this. Why do we always have to be so self-deprecating as humans? Why do we always have to just talk about like, oh, I suck. I'm useless, you know? And now, I, as I say this, it's five, 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 five. So, um, I don't know. Usually like when I say something of importance, I see either two, 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 two or five, 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 five. Um, so, um, yeah, that's important too, to, 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 to understand that authenticity is so important. Um, and as a Pisces moon, you know, you might, you might feel like in a way, like you, like you, you, you know, you, you may have felt different and like, 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 um, afraid to kind of, oh, my cats are so funny. Um, afraid to really express that, that true self, that true, like really, really like mystical, spiritual, like curious self. So yeah, when the Saturn return hit, you probably like, I don't know what happened. Um, um, and another reading I do is the current astrology reading. Like, uh, I know you're taking a different path, so we can talk about that later. But um, basically, like, this is the nail chart reading. People tend to get their current astrology reading done once a year. Um, you know, your birthday is coming up. So, FedEx, stop touching my TV. FedEx, stop. You know I me? Mean? I should probably just turn my TV off because it's like, stop scratching my TV. It's not even on. It's like, the, screen, the screen's frozen. It's scratching. FedEx. I'll give you a little cat cam. There's Esme. And Felix. Felix! Opreshtete. Esme, fijuminte. Let's see. They speak Romanian only. Um, so, and yeah, and, and speaking of pets, you're part of Fortunes in the Sixth House. So, you know, that you could you could be someone who really, really loves pets and, and, and feels lots of joy when you're, you know, able to be you know with pets but also um you know being of service and, and and helping other people and it doesn't just mean like being like in a charity it can be anything it could be with money you know it could be like like making people lots of money or it could be um you know something like political it could be anything you know it doesn't matter like i've had like clients from from every walk of life you know i've had royal and i, I don't speak about who they are you know because i'm very very private and i, I respect like people you know from high places that come to me so i i would never ever like even if justin bieber came to me i wouldn't tell anyone you know i would respect his um his privacy but you know I, i've dealt with like you know a good amount of royal, royalty um 
and and, and high high business people it's because i have regulus rising so i attract that energy um don't worry about what that means um but yeah like basically that's really really good um and it just means that you'll feel good when you're help when you're when you're you know giving a helping hand and also when your life is in this like is, is in order like when like um like and this goes right with your north node in virgo right which i was going to get get into next you see how it's kind of all this like swindling puzzle that every, everything's connecting um cats are fighting good i'll give you another little cat no, i missed it if you don't like cats i'm gonna feel so so bad that i should give you the cat cam but most people like cats um so but like yeah so that's that's the thing with saturn is that yeah like a, a, it can give like a very serious approach someone who, who can be very studious about things like um that relate to the higher philosophy um it's not just astrology it's not just you know it, it could be like reading like carl jung or or learning about past life regressions or um even just like like emmanuel, emmanuel kant or plato like whoever you know just like really wanting to like um learn or even just like documentary stuff like that right and and being having like a serious approach where it can actually lead to, to like some type of career in that you know that's where a lot of astrologers have it there but yeah so okay north node so 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 important now this is an evolution astrologer north node is like metaphorically it's like the death it's kind of like a destiny point it's like the mountain that you have not climbed in past lives that you're trying to get there in this life so the south nodes here the north nodes here they're opposite points I'll, I'll go ahead and share again just to kind of give you the the thing the download or the visual thing this is your south node in pisces this is like the been there done that um you know you've been someone who's who's very like you know very who who, who has who who's very you know good at communicating um but they in like very social also very empathetic but with north node here in virgo in the ninth house with vertex there it's that you're you're in this life you're trying to become and it was linked to this um like really like like taking all the the dreams and all the the mystical abilities and all of all of the these like really really intuitive abilities um that you that you had in past lives but that you didn't necessarily share with the world this in this life you're sharing those with the world um and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're a psychic and that you're you're sharing you're you're doing you're using that ability to that it means that um like like it's your it's your time to shine it's but really it's also more important than that it's your it's your time to um ultimately like find a higher philosophy you know finding a higher philosophy is what's really really important for you uh finding that 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 truth um that's what you know the north node in the ninth house is all about it's about um what is you know like 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 what what what's really true not like what people tell tell me to believe like what like i want to find my own belief system now north node in virgo um that's like yeah as i said like that's like um learning to be more organized learning to be more um like health oriented service oriented right but really like um it's 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 also very based on on um yeah yeah putting 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 your imagination which is so vivid into physical manifestation manifesting your your imagination um and also like traveling is very important and when i say traveling i mean traveling physically and traveling traveling metaphorically like really broadening your worldview and seeing how people from all different types of countries view the world stuff like that um vertex you know right next to it is, is kind of it's it's kind of like a cherry on top where it's like your doorway to higher awareness is through that higher wisdom you know it's through um you know helping people through 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 you know service through and also like um you know like aiming for for the best you can be but not perfectionism right um which you know i don't see many indicators i mean capricorn moons can be really really hard on themselves so you have to watch out you have to watch out for like having like negative self-talk that's why like i said the meditation thing is so important for you because you can kind of get in touch with with your um with yourself and you know um i'm very 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 well trained i'm, I'm really like i'm very very i i i can teach, i teach people meditation so if you ever end up uh I, I don't know why i'm bringing up this counseling thing because like 
I, 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 I rarely bring it up, but usually there's a reason for me saying whatever, whatever I say, but that's something that I teach or I can teach if someone is interested. Um, cause there's lots of psychology involved in meditation that keeps people away from it. And when I see someone like you, um, I think it'd be a huge shame. It's like, um, if you didn't utilize that because you have this real, real ability that you can like life changing type energy around meditation. So just putting that out there. Um, so yeah, uh, North node in ninth house, like really, and I can go back to my face now. Um, like really, really trying to kind of like, like, like not like, like not be like so scattered in past lives. There's like been kind of like a scattered energy over here, over here, over here. But like, it's about tying everything into like a one grand philosophy or, or multiple philosophies. Right. And then taking those philosophies and then moving them into your career and your Dharma, which is what I'm going to talk about next. What time at 50 minutes. Okay. So, um, you know, with, with, with your son in 10th house, that's the ultimate energy of someone who, is here to succeed who's here to like really project themselves it's a very strong strong marker in a chart um you know make make your mark on the world type energy right especially through your profession and uh it is there's no aspects to it besides the 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 conjunction of pluto which is just like the ultimate like just powerful like like so 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 you as a, as a sun conjunct pluto I, I i have actually one of my probably wealthiest clients um definitely top five. She had, uh, same thing as you Libra sun conjunct Pluto. And she, uh, was, was very different than typical Libras. You know, she was extremely pop, like extremely successful. Um, you know, she was, I'm not going to reveal anything about her, but she just, let's just say she, you know, like was on the wall, Street, wall Street journal, just like, um, you know, just really, really, um, innovating, innovative, great leader, very intelligent. And um, she had this level of power. And I always talk to her about how, and this is like another thing when, when we talk about current astrology, which is a completely different reading, you would have gone through, and it's over now, um, the um, transit Pluto squaring your moon. That probably would have been, let me look. Because you'll probably be like, oh my God, no way. How did you know? How did you know? Let's see, let's see, let's see, 2018. Whenever Pluto was around, 16 Capricorn no before that let's try 2016 mm. so good kombucha kombucha i just buy so much of it um yeah so um around 2016 you, you would have felt it before that but definitely that year probably shook you up like none other and it probably it continued for many many years um many many years probably like four Let's see, like, where it is in 2019. And this is just an example. We can talk about that reading later. But that one I encourage everyone to get once a year um, to understand the energies that are affecting them currently and what to expect energetically. Because the nail chart, you get this done once in your life, it's done. Current astrology, you should always get it done once a year. If you can afford it and you like me as an astrologer, you should get it done once a year. It's, it's easy as that, especially if you're someone who I think you are, who um, who is, uh, you know, a very powerful person and who wants all the edge. You know, J.P. Morgan once said, um, I always butcher quotes. He said, millionaires don't use astrology. Billionaires do. Every, every, everyone, every, every, every big politician, every if you think that the founders of, the, of America didn't use astrology to, to find the exact moment that was best for for the financial gain of the country and, and the prosperity of the country like it's literally like it's so obvious to, to, to me um they timed it right 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 when the sun was conjunct aldebaran um um so yeah 
Sun or Ascendant, one of the two. But basically, they had astrologers. When you look at that chart, you're like, yeah, duh, um, obviously. But don't worry about what Aldebaran is. It's just a very powerful fixed star that you have to have um, like a one degree conjunction. Oh, and you have Serpentis on your Venus. Oh, my God. Okay, we'll get into that after. That's next, the love stuff. Um, so, yeah, basically, like, uh, extreme power. So, yeah, what I was saying, saying about the Pluto stuff. So, probably, like, like you know, by 2018-ish, I mean, it was still around, but, it, like, you know, you bent through it, and, and it wasn't as strong. Yeah, and by... by um, but yeah, even in 2019, it's still there. But like by by like the end of 2019, it's six degrees away. And for Pluto, I, mean, I would say like you know, but you're really gonna feel by by now you're totally like in the clear. Pluto's at like 10 degrees away. But um, Fedix, Fedix, Chifach, Fedix, VH, Fedix, VH, Fedix, Ah, the prince. Here's Fedix, by the way. Fedix, cheesy, cheesy, mm. Give me some wisdom, Fedix. Give her some wisdom. You don't want me to hold you? You want to pretend because you know you're being filmed, Mr. Double Leo, Scorpio boy? Okay. Ow, he scratches me. Um, so, yeah, like mega, mega power. So, also with that, you have to watch out for being overly powerful. Now, this goes back to your Black Moon Lilith. Black Moon Lilith in astrology represents and um it represents like kind of the darker side of your personality um maybe like a side that doesn't really get manifested as much um only gets manifested when you're at your lowest and in leo it's about like always need to be the center of attention um you know thinking like it, it's like your dark side right it's, it's how i look at it different astrologers look at it differently i look at it like that and um yeah, like sometimes you can you can feel that other people are taking advantage of you, um, which you know goes with what I was saying before. Believe in sometimes you can believe that you're the one that's giving 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 while and not realizing like what, what other people are doing for you. Um, but it also makes you you know very honest. Um, so yeah, but I would say also like like Leo Leo like little, like there's a need to like allow other people to shine, and with the Pluto on the Sun, there can be a tendency like. Like, I'm very curious to understand your relationship with power, because sometimes people with this can be so powerful that they don't even realize it. And they um, so there's a need to kind of like not dominate too much, um, which as a Libra, um, it helps that a lot because Libra is very diplomatic. It's very good. at sen You're very, very good at sensing other person's mood and just their overall thought process. Right. Because uh, Libra is air. So that's like the mental and then the the moon and, and Pisces is like the emotional, intuitive, uh, spiritual undercurrent. So you have both of those. Imagine how big grave an asset that could be, or that is. Um, and then Mercury, you know, right there on your midheaven, I spoke about how that that's that that speaks like you know a career where your um you know communication like 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 any kind of like uh, like things like 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 uh, first thing that came to mind is like sales, anything where where you're you're meant to talk. And use your voice, um, like I, I could see that being like a diplomat or even a politician, um, you know, a, a bit someone that, that does some type of like business, like an executive, something like that, right? Anything. Um, but like, there's there's a hundred different possibilities, right? And um, yeah, so so that's that's kind of kind of there, and um, you know. I, I, I don't know what you do. I don't need to know what you do. It's none of my business. It's only if you if you want to tell me when we speak privately. But um, based on what I'm seeing, I would imagine that you know your career is very important to you, and you're meant and you're meant for that. You're meant to to find success, material success, because you spent lots of lifetimes more in the spiritual realm. So in this in this life, yes, there is a need to you know there's a natural ability and an interest in that. But you're really really trying to like take the daydream the daydreaming and moving moving as i said into like the the real material and lots of really good luck with 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 money and stuff like that we talk about that so um yeah mercury in libra so actually let's go back let's go back because i haven't talked about like the moon energies uh, opposite saturn so moon typically moons uh uh represents the mother while sun is a father it's not always the case um 
but let's just say like it's the the son is usually the more dominant parent um the the masculine parent right so it's usually the father so the father i see like literally like it's it's maybe your father like a lot of times when i see this it's like the father was a very 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 powerful person um i've had um i'm not gonna say who um different people who who, who've had something very similar who've had very very powerful um fathers um who they had very good relationships with now the mother on the other hand that's where the difficulty comes in from what this the chart's showing um you know moon and pisces so a squared uh, neptune um uh, opposite saturn you know just overall like you know moon and pisces as kids they they require lots of love lots of lots of lots of attention um they're very very sensitive to everything so if there's fighting because like what when, when you have like your sun and your moon in the position uh a lot of times it means that like maybe the parents are divorced um if they're not divorced maybe their their worldviews are very very different so um yeah they're, they're, they're like you like if there was a divorce you you may have like internalized it very very like like very, it maybe was very very difficult for you um you may you could like literally have a sibling who's like you know, a year difference in you that has a completely different chart who had a completely different reaction to it, you know? So, um, yeah, uh, Saturn opposite moon, emotional needs not meant as met as a kid. Um, but that is one where life got way easier emotionally for you after 30, 29 and a half, but 30, whatever Saturn return. Um, and yeah, it, it, what can happen with moon opposite, especially in Pisces opposite Saturn, there can be self-esteem issues. There can be issues, Related to depression, periods of depression, um, melancholy, um, and just like lots of like restrictions when it comes to like emotional progression, right? Um, lots of restrictions, lots, lots of like like feeling held back in certain ways, like and especially when it comes to relationships and being vulnerable, it can make it very, very difficult to be vulnerable and to trust, especially when you've been hurt once. Finish this bad boy. Um, yeah. So it's Pisces moons. You know, it's uh, more more Cancer, but still Pisces. Like, it's difficult to to trust again once you've been hurt. It's very difficult to trust again once you've been hurt. So, um, yeah, Mercury there in Libra makes you very very. Um, no, no, no. I was I wasn't there. I was still. I was Mercury was next. Um, it's unexpected. So yeah, with a square with 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 um, Neptune that creates like a lot of confusion around like the, the 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 early nurturing like maybe the mother was absent um uh maybe you know there there was like just a level of fog and uncertainty around the relationship and it can make someone it can it can really really cloud a lot of the energy around someone's emotions their emotional nature and um one second i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up some notes i, I have like a whole database um I I could do any reading without notes, but sometimes I like looking at my notes, like from like years ago to kind of give little extra tidbits. Where's that book? Also, I like having this book for daily readings because it gives me like keywords. I like I like keywords. Um. So with Moon, Neptune, a dreamer, danger of self delusion, which you spoke about. Uh, susceptible to schemers, problems, and love affairs. It's very, very like I don't, I don't really like like. There's parts of that. Okay, so let's get more into that. So it basically like makes you like super, super sensitive. So with this, like, and I'm not even looking at my notes yet. I'm just like remembering things. Um, you may like people who have a uh, moon, mother, um, Neptune, either opposite or square. They can be people who they almost like hold on to their like like let's say their their mom had tons of like emotional baggage um they can be people who like take that especially as an empath they take that as their own so how your mother nurtured you is way more important than it is for most people right if she was like um because you're, you're even when you're like a baby you're very sensitive to like subtle energies nonverbal cues all that stuff um so any kind of like negative like uh, impressions like like her acting like a victim if there's any like abuse of the, with the, you know the mother and father like um you have to watch out for escapism right that's the thing with pisces moon is that like when stuff happens um that's why like pisces like low by pisces is like using drugs and alcohol 
high vibe is like escaping in like a more spiritual kind of artistic way. But um, it can make someone like kind of want to escape and, and go into like their own imaginary world and just like not deal with whatever's happening. But if like there's a healthier mother child relationship, it could um, push some of that away and create lots of like emotional um, fortitude. So the key with this is expressing your emotions and having a partner that you can express your emotions with. Um, being able, especially, it's very difficult with the the opposite of Saturn. Um, being able to like you know um, express that. Um, also, like you know, groups of like minded people. So um, I'm just gonna say a, a key word. You know, remind me. It's very secret. Just remind me of the word secret group. That's all I'm saying. Uh, remind me that. But um, yeah, finding like-minded people who 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 also are kind of more similar to you, like um, in the way they think, and having like like some level of being able to kind of like see that there's other people that are like you in that sense, right? But um, yeah, like like being able to share your emotions and your dreams, your dream life is probably insanely interesting. It's very very interesting or or important. Um, and, um, you know, when you share your suffering, when you're vulnerable with people, um, and like not playing the victim, like literally just like, like, okay, like people who have this can be like amazing, like storytellers. And I, I talked about the right, the writing thing. I know that you're a, a good writer. Um, but like, there can be like poetry, act, like writing, acting, singing, all that stuff. Right. So like the more you get familiar with your image, the more that shyness goes away. And I already talked about the thing with like mirrors, screens, cameras, stage all that stuff like um you know practicing in front of your phone your webcam it's like that's how how you um kind of get past that energy it's one of the best ways and i've tested this with myself as a pisces and um that's probably why me and you have like a, a connection where you, you you know you understand me is because your moon is the same as my sun which is you know very very good um so with that said um Okay. Yeah. So you'll be someone who 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 also like like the split I talked about like in relationships like moving to that part. You know who who likes a very deep like intimate like super intimate relationships like, but also relationships where you're able to get your space when you need them and also um more 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 or less like uh I don't want to say like eccentric but like like um you're not someone who's like gonna like be in that kind of relationship just because it's like, it's like the traditional kind of relationship like you want that soul binding energy that, that that relationship that's like just completely like you know too 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 like 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 that the soulmate kind of energy right um ba like like no like no secrets like just like you guys are like just one unit kind of right kind of power couple energy because it's like it's in this it's in the, the 11th house so maybe you guys have like common goals you guys share together um, whether it's like, you know, for what you want to do for the world or just what you guys want to do for your family, whatever it is. Um, and you know, maybe it's someone that you, you met like, um, you know, doing what you're doing for the world. Right. Um, or in some type of, maybe like, in like, like someone that you met through a friend, someone that you met through, you know, an association, uh, a group of some sort, who knows, but someone where there's like a common, a commonality in terms of goals shared shared values um doesn't mean you have to be exactly like similar but like the like the individual needs to definitely like um because as a pisces moon the emotions will be up and down up and down right um so someone so someone who's who's like very very solid like a rock where you feel like there's no way that that that, that this person will ever like um you know um do something that would be like dishonest or like you, you know you can rely on that person a thousand percent and um yeah so uh, venus in 11th house is nice it's like you like with it's very good for socializing very good for 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 finding yourself within that's why i said the the, the key word that i won't repeat secret group i just repeated it <laughs> um but yeah you might be like the like with the, the libra stuff like the peacemaker but venus and scorpio now this is a very interesting energy venus and mars and scorpio first of all and i don't like talking about like sex in these readings um um because like people get confused they think i'm talking about like sex sex i'm talking about sexual energy like life force prana uh mars in scorpio i mean also like that kind of sex like 
Mars and Scorpio, obviously everyone knows that that's like a very sexual energy, uh, very intimate, like, um, in that, in that, in that way. Um, but like, it's really like on a, on a deeper level, like with the Venus, it's like really looking for a soulmate, like a marriage, you know, not just a marriage partner, someone who like, it's like you, you can share your deepest secrets, um, like sh share life at like the deepest possible level. Right. It's very intense. So people can get really freaked out. Like I've, I've dated, um, I think just one girl who had Venus in Scorpio and it dominated her whole personality. You know, it's very, it gives a very serious approach and it can, and the low vibe of it is that it can be a little bit controlling. Um, and it's, it just, it, it can freak. There's a, such an intensity in, in, in the love expression that people who are not like down for that, like, um, they can get a little bit freaked out. Right now. Um, and I was going to talk about the unaspected of Mercury. So this actually plays in that into that. Like the fact that your Mercury has no aspects, meaning that it's not being held back by any any plans. I mean, it's square the ascendant, but like, okay, whatever. Like, it's still unaspected by plants. I mean, basically, it makes it so like like people who have unaspected Mercuries, they tend to talk a lot. Um, they tend to be people who, but like for you, it's on the midheaven, so that you can be like a master of communication. But, um, yeah, like someone who, 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 who is like a powerhouse when it comes to, to anything communication. So if you're, a, a, I wouldn't be surprised if you were like, yeah, I'm a best selling author or like, um, someone who, who loves writing, right. Or who loves speaking. So yeah. Or who has, yeah. Um, is there any, and there's no bad aspects to the Venus. So nice. And also, yeah, and also Venus is sextile in the, 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 the north node, the south node, and trying the south node. So what that means is that all your relationship, which is you'll probably be very happy to hear, is very, very karmic. Um, it's it's very karmic. It's like like you guys have known each other before in past lives, um, which probably is no surprise to you to hear this. You're probably like, duh. Um but yeah, that, that that speaks about like how every relationship you've ever had, there's a very, very karmic component in it, um, which is all obviously very interesting. And yeah, fate playing a massive role in that area of life. They did you know, like probably how, how you met your husband and the circumstances. And it just probably felt like when you met him, you probably felt like I've known this guy forever. Um, now, um, okay, so moving on from that, yeah. So, so with, 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 um, so, 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 so yeah, there's a deep need for intimacy, deep need for passion with the Mars and Scorpio. Um, that's a very, it's, it's a very powerful, uh, it makes you like a, a passionate warrior. Now there, now also with this, you can be quite dramatic in, in love and relationships and stuff. Um, and Mars and Scorpio is the last person you want as an enemy, last person. Um, and um yeah it's like it's a, it's another indicator I, I i don't know if i did, did i mention this is another indicator like the psychic ones the psychic uh, placements well there you go there's another one is mars and scorpio it's like i, I always call it like the built-in lie detector it's a person who has this like really intense spiritual aura spiritual energy um they fight for what they believe in um and they you, you don't want you don't want to mess with them because they know how to sting 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 it might be the most powerful it, 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 it excuse me it is it's the most powerful even though you're not a scorpio it's the most powerful scorpio placement you can have is mars and scorpio because scorpio is ruled by mars so yeah like um like it goes back to the whole thing with power like so um it's very important i'm gonna switch back um it's very important like you know what is your relationship to power you know uh, not, not just in like your, your work life and maybe like, you know, you're a very successful person who's benefited a lot from that, but also in the context of relationships. Right. Um, cause a lot of people who have this, like when they're younger, they go through periods of time where, you know, they really like, um, like relationships felt more like power struggles, if you want to call it that, you know, like, um, like, like, and they can use like tactics like manipulation, to try to win over their partner. Um, there can even be just like, like loving at such an intense level. So with Mars and Scorpio, there's a deep, also like a huge need to, to find some kind of like outlet. I, I, I would say like creative outlet it could be creative, physical. I mean, I think with the lack of fire, um, 
be very beneficial for you to have like a, a physical outlet, like um, working out or something like that. Um, I have no idea if you do or not, but um, you know, that that's going to help you a lot. And, and like I said, being, being close to water, taking baths, Epsom salt baths, just anything with, you know, with candles also like uh, that, there, there it is. That's what I was looking for. Uh, baths with candles is a very good remedy when you, when you uh, have lots of water and lack fire because you know the, the the fire the actual fire of the candles can can help you with that and can help you get in touch with with that that more fiery part of yourself um but yeah just knowing that you lack fire can be the motivating force for you to to push yourself in that way but i don't think you lack ambition at all and i know that for a fact and the fact that you have you know that fire that cap rising it, it, it can push that away a little bit um and then Mars is in the house and then Uranus there. So Uranus is conjuncting both of these. So that makes it so like it goes back to the split, right? Uh, Uranus is the planet right here of, of freedom. So it's going to make you in relationships like have this push and pull between like really, really wanting like very, very close, passionate, like as I've described relationships, but then also like one ones that give you a level of space. Like you don't want to feel completely submerged in your partner to the point to where you're losing yourself. Um, you want to have your life. You want to have your partner has his life and you know, you guys come together, but you guys don't like become just like one human, you know, how, how many, many, and I believe it's my belief system. One day I'll write a book about this. I say this so many times. I probably actually won't, but I just believe that a lot of, you know, marriages and whatnot fall apart in today's world because of the, um, the over submergence. And this could just be coming from me. This could, I always, I wonder if it's a projection, because I'm Venus and Mars and Aquarius, which is like literally the opposite of you. Like me and you, we both have our, our Venus and Mars in the same sign, which also I'm going to say it, um, having Venus and Mars together is very, very, it's very, very sexual, especially in Scorpio. Um, but um, what, what, what it does is that like, yeah, Aquarius is like very, very cool and standoffish while Scorpio is very like intimate. So yeah, very intimate, very passionate. There can be lots of, dra there can be drama in that area of life. And then it's in the 11th house, so it, 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 the same energy can get channeled into friends. Now, Venus, this is you know what I'll talk about in a, little, in a second, um, is is conjunct a very difficult fixed star, which can make it um, everything I, I mentioned about the difficulties and some of the lower energies um, of Scorpio playing out. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but yeah, the Uranus is going to make you want unconventional relationships like Maybe like, you know, like, let's say you had like a parent who's like, I want you to marry someone like this. You'd be like, nah, screw that. I'm marrying someone that, you know, I'm, I'm marrying someone who I have an intellectual like connection with. I don't like, like, it's more about the mind. It's more about like the mind and, and, and who they are and, and how, how, how individualistic they are. You know, you want someone who you don't want some carbon, some cardboard like person who's just like a, a copy of like you know, every, every, you know, everyone else in the world, you want someone different who gives you space and where there's like an intuitive understanding of your needs. And when you do need to have your time alone, gives it to you. Um, and then of course, Neptune, the 12th house, I mean, that's just like amazing place for, for dream life. Um, it gives you like extreme powers in the, in the esoteric and, um, extreme powers in, in 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 understanding like the, the kind of overall zeitgeist and the overall energy of like humanity and um it can make you a very powerful healer it can make you a very very powerful healer um and one thing i didn't really mention is chiron the fifth house that speaks to um how you might experience like pain um around like allowing yourself to kind of be in your inner child so I'm going to take myself off camera because I wanted to look at something that I don't want to reveal any names because I am top secret, man. Let's see here. Let's see. Yeah. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Um, I was just about to say, like, uh, you might benefit heavily from a spouse that has fire. And there you go. Your spouse is a Sag sun with Sag um, Mars. So there you go. Like, I, I, I didn't say at the start of the reading, too, that, like, your lack of fire um, 
and his pace is raising. Oh, it's so beautiful. You guys have the the moon and the ascendant. So so nice. Um, but yeah, like you know, he he will be someone who, and he has Capricorn moons. So like yeah, like definitely, he'll he'll have like um uh and, oh wow, and that means that his 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 moon is on your ascendant, and your your moon is on your his moon is on your ascendant, right? His moon's Capricorn, your ascendant's Capricorn. And then his ascendant is Pisces, and your moon is Pisces. Capiche. And then the fact that he's a Sag sun is beautiful because where's your chart? Where'd it go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? That's, as I said, what you're missing. Let's back to the chart. You know, that, that's what you need. You need that kick in the butt, that, that fire. So it, it really completes you in that sense of um, pushing forward. So um yeah basically like um with with Neptune there very powerful um uh I would like have a dream journal if I were you and like write down your dreams and see how they correlate with your everyday reality and um yeah it just gives you like like really really intense powers with the esoteric so yeah basically okay what else do you have to say um. Another thing about Neptune Tilt House, which goes to your Pisces moon, is that you can feel very uh, overwhelmed by the undercurrents of the world. Um, and you can, like, escape through, like, the daydreaming fantasies. And it's also, like, really good for compassion. So it's another warning of, like, of escapism and um, dealing with reality head on. But when you're dating someone with a Capricorn moon, um, you know, you guys are both very, very ambitious, right? Um, and he probably, like, like, really likes that about you. Your, your ambition you know um so i definitely get power a couple of vibes we'll see um and yeah so that's that um now let's see how i left anything out midheaven in, in, in libra you know you're gonna you know really want a profession where like there's beauty harmonious harmoniousness balance where your social skills um you know are are used and you'll you'll you you won't want like a hectic work environment. You want something that involves like a level of beauty, a level of um you know ruled by your Venus eleventh house, working, collaborating with other people, stuff like that. Um okay, so now I was gonna look at the stars. Um, so yeah, Venus and Serpentis rising. So yeah, oh yeah, and then Juno, Juno, of course, this is beautiful because your Juno is, is representing like your, um, I can't show names. Um, your Juno represents like your ideal husband, basically. And it's literally Capricorn, which is your husband's moon. So like your ideal, kind of like, like what you look for, like in a marriage partner is someone who's very ambitious someone who's very pioneering, someone who, who goes after things in life, someone who's very, very solid, you can count on, consistent, loyal, um, responsible, who's, who's, not, who's, not, who's not there to mess around. You know, you know they're serious about what they're doing. And also having Juno rising is very good for attractiveness. It gives a very smooth kind of appearance. Um, and uh, kind of, even though Capricorn rising can be a little bit stern sometimes, and a little bit cold, it's going to add a lot of warmth to that. Okay. There's been nothing here. Headaches, one second. I'll play with you in a minute. My, my cat was a dog in past life, according to my psychic. So he's, and it shows because he like literally like makes, makes me play fetch with him. I'll show you the cat cam. Here's Esme, who won my challenge, as you saw. Team Esme, hashtag Team Esme. World's cutest cat. So cute. He's a baby. And look, he brings in his ball. FedEx. See him? I'm not sharing, right? So look at this. And he'll bring it back like a dog. Um, and he'll do that for hours. That's how he works out. Um so yeah, anyways, um, so nothing there. 
regale on your on on your uh, part of portion. That's very good for. Actually, I don't really know what that does. I'll have to look that up. I haven't really seen that. Um, I was gonna say it's really good for money, but we'll have to look. Okay, nothing there. Headaches, bring it over here, boy. Number four. Go get your ball, Fakes. I'm not going to go get it for you. Okay. Man, if you if, if you were born, like, two days later, you would have um, Sun Conjunct Spica, which is, like, really, really good for... For, for all kinds of stuff, especially money and, and success. But you already have like Pluto there, so it's like whatever. Um. Okay, nothing really there. So yeah, I guess it's just. Oh no, there is one. So, no surprise. Writing. No, no, it's nineteen. Yeah. So um. By the way, I'm using um like the Swedish chewing tobacco. I am not addicted to tobacco. I don't know why I have to. I always like feel like defending myself, but like I just like sometimes I don't drink like very rarely. As I told you before, um I just like sometimes randomly I'm like I'm just gonna start doing chewing tobacco for a little bit, and I just like but I never get addicted to tobacco. It's very lucky because my dad was addicted for a long time, but I after a while I'm just like meh over it. Um. So yeah, okay, so it's serpent. So it's so, okay. So zoom in El Shalami. Um, let's go into my notes. That's the one that's about writing, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so basically like I've talked about writing before. So your Venus conjunct um that is is very good for social success, very good for for, for, for marriage as well getting help from women, but also in, 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 um, you know, very old astrology. Um, it's, it's, um, you know, having, uh, Venus there, it's really, really good for, for writing, right. For being a writer. So, uh, that's like how many times have I said writer? And, uh, then of course the last thing we'll talk about serpentist. Now this one could get a little bit ugly, but, um, what's so serpentist and algo, I'd say are probably like the two most difficult um and they're nearly opposite each other too um yeah so it'd be crazy if someone was born with like a a scorpio sun on serpentis and like a taurus moon no no a taurus sun on algal and a scorpio moon on serpentis like, and i know they exist god damn but basically what it is both of those um they get a bad rep you get to know them i mean not that many people know about anyways but it gets a bad rep because it, it people think of like the low vibe of Scorpio, like the manipulative, the controlling, all that. And they think, okay, well, like if you have this, like with your Venus, which rules like love and self-love, that can be very like bold, cruel, heartless, you know, make someone like a criminal, a liar, all these kinds of things, like a moral, it's linked to like immorality and all these things. But the thing about this, the more I've looked into this, because I, I see this a lot of my clients, right? So why would I see such a horrible, 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 like, um, quote unquote, star linked to um, so many of my clients' charts? Well, the thing about it is that, yeah, it can show up in that type of way, like earlier in life. But really, um, the key is to, because, um, yeah, it can make one very jealous, like some very, very jealous. It's another thing of the like globe Scorpio, like. Like, um, let's say like you're, 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 you're dating someone and you're married, but I'm just giving examples, right? Let's say you're dating someone. Um, it can make, it can give someone like extreme jealousy, um, and, um, stuff of that nature. But in the end, you know, it's very, very like linked to, um, to spiritual power, right? Um, spiritual power and, that, like, like it's either you take the lower route, as I said before, or you take the the route of um, it's it's called Unu Kalai, 
Oh, cool. I found something about it. Let's see if they give any more information here. There's not much about it. So, Venus. Uh, okay, so it can make... Okay, so this is another one that can make one rich through the arts. So the fact that you have it on Venus can be good. So it can make someone rich through the arts, singing, drama, journalism, speaking out about women's matters. Um... And then they say, not sure about the whole jealous of the own sex thing. Seems more like feminism. However, when warped, the powerful mothering slash feminine instinct becomes treacherous. Uh, okay. And it can be codependent relationships if drugs are involved. So that's another big thing to look out for. But I don't, I don't really get this feeling that you have that. I mean, there could be some escapism. Who knows? You never know with anyone. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed. Um, Lots of lots of lots of energy there. I want to actually look at one other thing. Your midheavens at twenty nine Libra. Um. So yeah, like having your midheaven at twenty nine degrees also is going to like represent like um karmic endings and like like really like um lots of like karma when it comes to your career. So lots of fate in that area of life. There's no asteroids there. And then also let's look at twenty five. Okay. So these are like like not that strong. I'm just like looking at them to see if it's if it kind of like says anything. Um yeah, this one doesn't give any information. And this one. Is very good for so terebulum, which you have on your rising, it's very good for, for fortune. Um Let's see if this is anything. No, it doesn't say anything. It says it can give great fortune, but with regret and disgrace. Um, Venus and Saturn. Okay. But also, it can, it can, it can, yeah, make someone very seductive. It can yeah, create a seductive energy. So that's the last thing I'll say. Um, that last one I said is a very minor star, so don't really worry about that one. You have Juno on the ascendant, which is going to push that all away pretty much. So that's it. How long did I go? Of course, an hour thirty. God damn, I can never keep it to an hour. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Um, with the big reading. All right.